If you have questions about data types, go ahead and look back at that video that was made previously. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to deal with very simple uh, variables. And I'm just going to put them at the very top here. It's perfectly fine to put a variable before anything else. So that's where I'm going to put them for now. We'll discuss putting them in other places in another video, possibly the next video. So the first thing I have to do is I have to tell what type of value I'm going to store. Again, I'm going to put my data type in. So in this case, I'm just going to type in byte. And that, again, is going to just tell it this is how much storage you're going to need. Then what I need to do is I need to give this data type a name. And there's a couple rules here on how to name uh, variables. Number one, they have to be one letter long. There can't be any spaces. Or, sorry, not any one letter. It needs to be one whole word. In other words, it, there can't be any spaces. It doesn't matter on the spelling, so I can mash a bunch of words together, similar to it down here. Uh, well, setup is OK being one word, so that's fine. We'll talk about that in a second. But there just can't be any spaces in it. That's the first thing you have to know, no spaces. Number two, it cannot start with a number. And number three, it can't be a word that Arduino is already using for something else, such as I cannot have a variable called setup because, well, setup is already being used. I can't have one called void because void's being used. I can't have a variable called byte because byte is already being used. There are also some other words that we don't know yet that we can't use, and that's just going to come with a little bit of time, right? You're going to have to be able to practice and say, oh, that's a, that is a word that's already being used in Arduino. We might not know what those are yet. One of those, just for the sake of showing you, would be delay. Now, usually, a keyword, something that already is going to be used in Arduino, is going to change a different color. So you'll notice, I can't use delay because it changed a color. But if I still wanted to say something about delaying, I could do a capital D. That's different. So writing out capitals and lowercase are um, things that you have to keep in mind. It does make a variable or a keyword different. I could put delay 1. I put a number here. I just can't put the number at the beginning. Now let's say that what I want to do is I want to be able to control an LED. And I want to be able to say, I want you to turn on this specific LED. And I've plugged this LED into my Arduino in pin 10. First off, I need to be able to describe how we're going to tell you that it's pl plugged into pin 10. And that's what the, where the variable comes in. I'm going to write LED. So now what I've done is I've made space called LED. And it's a byte amount of space. And now I can save the number 10 there. So now any time that I want to talk about the, uh, the LED, I don't have to remember in my head, oh, where was that plugged in again? Was it 8? Was it 9? Was it 10? I don't remember. Instead, I just say, you know what? My LED, it will go back and it will look and see what value was stored into that. So if I just do this right now, and I put my semicolon on here, that ends this command. What's going to happen when it comes on to line one is it's going to make a byte amount of space in storage. And it's going to name that space LED. But nothing is saved there yet. This is called declaring a variable. I've declared a name and an amount, a type a size, what type of information is going to be stored there. I've declared. Now, so let's say that I come down into here. And there's no particular reason why I'm coming down to here. I'm just showing that you can do this in multiple spots. I could then type the word LED. 
I don't need to declare it anymore. I don't need to give it a new data type. It's already been declared. So now from here on out, anytime I want to refer to it, I do not write a data type in front of it. I just say, hey, remember LED? And it'll look back and say, yeah, that was a bite-sized amount. All I have to do now is I need to say, hey, LED. And then afterwards, I'm going to write an equal sign. And I'm going to put the value that I want to save into it. And again, I'm going to end with a semicolon. So this is going to read from right to left. What it's going to do is it's going to say, take the number 10. And this does not mean equals. Remember, it means assign. So take number 10 and assign that value to LED. Before this line here, so everything from line 1 to line 6, LED is empty. Doesn't have a value, at least not one that we know about. But anywhere after line 7, LED now holds a value of 10. When I give a variable a value, we call that initializing a variable. I've give it, given it now an initial value. Now, since I did not make this a constant, if I made this a constant, then I couldn't change this. But since this is not a constant, I could go down here to line 9, and I could type in LED again, and I could put 13. Well, that means up to here, all it's done is it's declared space in a name. From here and here, I've given it an initial value of 10. And from here on down, I have overwritten that value. And now that value is going to be 13. Now, let's say that I want to tighten things up a little bit. I can do that. What I could do is I can declare and initialize on the exact same line. So what I could do is I could say take value 10 and assign that to a space that you're going to create right now, a byte amount of space called LED. I have now declared and initialized it in the same step. Now let's say I want a second LED. And I want to save that to spot 11. This is going to have a problem because I'm declaring two spots with the same name. And it's going to get confused because when, if it were to create both of these, it would create two spots called LED. They're the same type and everything. They're going to look identical to it, except for one has a 10 and one has 11. What happens down here when I say, hey, can you go look in LED? It's, going to, it's not going to know which one to look into. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to differentiate. We're going to have to make these slightly different variables. Just like in math, you'd have an x and a y. Here I need to change it somehow. And I could just say, this is x and this is y. The biggest problem with that would be, it would be hard for me as I'm writing my code to remember what x and y mean, because it's not very descriptive. So let's keep LED. But let's say LED, the first one plugged into 10, is red. I could do LEDR. And let's say the one down here is blue, LEDB. Now they're different. Now when I come down here and I type in LEDR, it knows to look at this one, and it's going to pick the 10 spot. If you want to be even a little bit more descriptive, you can actually type red. But one thing I cannot do is I cannot have a space. The reason I cannot have a space is that breaks the rules of naming things. They have to be together. Now, you notice that I made a capital R. And the reason I do that is this is uh, sometimes called a camel case. It looks like a camel case because there's going to be humps in the middle of uh, basically a conjoined word, words that have been strung together with no spaces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to capitalize the first letter of each word just so it's easier to read. because. If I didn't do that, you could probably look at this and say, yes, that says LED red, but it's a little bit harder to see. If 
I make this LED blue, it's a little bit hard to see. So a very common thing to do is we keep the first one lowercase, and then every next word we capitalize. There's another way to do it. Sometimes what people will do is they will put an underscore. This is another way to do it. That underscore counts as a character, so it still looks like one word to it. Uh, but it is easy to read, and I didn't have to capitalize anything. So it's really a preference. I prefer camel case. So I would prefer doing it this way, but it really doesn't matter. You don't even... You can go from one variable to the next. I could have this one be camel case and this one have an underscore. It doesn't matter as long as when I'm down here. When I refer to LED red, I have to write it exactly that way. If I misspell it up here, if I accidentally go LED red, red, I don't know, however you'd pronounce that, I would have to do the exact same thing anywhere else that I use it. It doesn't care that I misspell it, it just cares that I'm consistent. Um, I think that's about it for this one. I wanted to keep this one somewhat short, just about how to declare, right? We're making space, how to initialize, give a value, and then it is also possible to give it a new value. So those are the main things for now about variables.